103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio, our WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, July 12th, uh, 12th, that is, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host with us, Wombat, on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. It's a good song. It just doesn't have a lot of lyrics to it. That's I just it repetitive. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Oh, the chord and progression guests, is really good. What's up, Jake? And our guests today are Judd Pirate Higgs, uh, Red Leader, George Dot Fire, and did I miss anybody? Oh, hey, Jake, welcome. Yeah. And um, nice beard, man. I guess that covered everybody there. So, uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, God's holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville. And we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid show breaks. And did you know that there's a streaming atheist call in TV show? Did you know? Oh, that? Yeah. You know that? yeah, 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 for yeah. Over yeah. 10 years. Yes, I'm so glad you brought it up because they're just about to finish the last couple of chapters. So, uh, Haiku really? or volleyball in Japanese is a story about Hinata Shoyo, who's like this really short volleyball player uh, who okay. wants to be the best in the world, but he's so tiny, but he can jump. Or as he says, Toi Mas, no. he can fly. No. And it's, uh, just, it's, it's, a, it's a show chronicling his time through high school. As no, he it's not. Volleyball. <laughs> and all of his team members think, you can't jump higher than us. And he works hard and he does it. And it's, um, it's, the manga's down to its last couple of chapters. It, highly recommended. It, it has nothing to do with volleyball. Unless it's an atheist <laughs> volleyball team. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> it takes place but in Japan. No, uh, it's, a, it's a TV streaming video show that's been going on here for over 10 years in Knoxville. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be telling you how you can connect with that and watch it after the mid-show break. Uh, if you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for our Digital Free Thought Radio Hour page. And you can use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Wombat, what do you have for us today? What's our we're gonna topic? Be talking, we're going to be talking about some really cool things. Uh, first, we're going to be talking about, is it natural for us to conflate our impression of reality with reality itself? <clears throat> we're we'll talking about identity. And then we're going to be going through a lot of listener feedback questions. But before we go through all of that, I'm throwing it over to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Arr. <laughs> our noodly lord who art in a colander, al dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we put up with those who cuss against us. Mm. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Ramen. Ramen. <laughs> Acolytes, all of us. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to throw it over to our own Doubtfire. Uh, what was your first topic that you wanted to go over today? Yeah, so I've been dealing with this um, throughout the week with uh, different folks um, at work and um, online on social media, stuff like that. I just love talking about this kind of stuff, but mm. conflating. Um, our perspectives with reality, right? So I don't know if you guys noticed, but a lot of people feel very certain and very um, entrenched in their ideas, whether it be politics, their religious views, you know, anything, right? Hmm. Like everybody feels like, you know, it's really weird, but it, I just get the impression, and this might be my own impression, but it's that everybody feels that, they don't have a perspective. They're just they just see reality as it really is, and they're see the middleman operating based the on that, right? Mm -hmm. 
do you do you guys notice that kind of normalcy yeah, it's, or it's, sure well you um you could say a perspective is your reality exactly. if i understand you, you if i understand you right um uh mm -hmm. i want to throw in my own origins on this which is that i was raised an atheist and i was taken to um, humanist lectures when i was four years old and and my mother was um a political activist and a union organizer and like that but she was not an activist about atheism it just was you know it, it's just like God was yeah. simply not a presence, not a thing, nothing, nothing to be rejected. It just was not there. Mm. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's what you mean. Um, that's actually a pretty good question. Like, what do you mean by yeah. reality? And what's the difference mm -hmm. between that and subjective reality? Dred, what do you think exactly. is the difference between the two? Pardon I me? Think, I what think you, you, you hit the nail on the head. Boom, I'm trying so, to with the screwdriver, man. Dred, what do you think the difference yeah. is between reality yeah, and subjective reality? You're putting or books like on my head now. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, certainly our senses are the filters through which uh, yeah. we perceive reality, and those can be affected um, by various, you know, in various ways. Mm. I mean, that's a, I remember reading one of the Socratic dialogues or, you know, Plato's dialogues there uh, where he talks about, you know, how, you know, circumstances or uh, deficits in your senses can affect your, the way that you perceive reality. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't Very mean true. that, it doesn't mean that there isn't an objective reality independent of mm -hmm. how well you sense it or not. Right. There's a difference between, you know, our epistemology and the ontology of what reality really is, right? So, man, there are a lot of big I words going like, on right now. Yeah. So, epistemology meaning like um, how we know things. Mm -hmm. And I right. think it's kind of like what you just said, kind of piggyback off that. It's kind of like a guy who's wearing rose colored glasses. You ask him, what is reality? <laughs> or what is the nature of your glasses? Well, he's going to answer it based on looking through his glasses. You know, yeah. it's going to, it's kind of hard to. So, I guess the work that I'm trying to do that I've been doing since I left religion is to kind of take a, a meta perspective, to kind of get out of my own perspective, to see things um, or at least acknowledge that I have a perspective. I don't really know reality as it really is. Um, as I thought I did when I was part of religion, I was part of uh, um, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses for years. Oh, man. And so it was kind of like, kind of like um, like I'm working in IT now, so the analogy is kind of like, you know, they run off a certain operating system, you know? So, but in order to change, you know, if we really want to step out of that and do work to see what reality is all about, we might have to change more than just the operating system, but maybe the BIOS, the basic input-output system. But that's kind of dangerous. Yeah, Scott, I'm going to... start messing around with your BIOS, you'll mess everything up, you know? Scott, I'm well, going to Well, doubt, Doubtfire, um, I just want to emphasize something that you just said. Mm -hmm. um, I'm partial to a system of typing people's uh, reality systems that um, is similar to what you just said. In other words, that we all look at the world through a color filter. And my color mm -hmm. filter is different than your color filter, is different than Dale's color filter, for instance. But each of us perceives the world through that filter and then reacts. See, that's the part I want to uh, add to what you just said, is that people take actions based upon their misperception mm -hmm. of reality. Absolutely. Scott, I'm also going to throw this out to everybody else. Jake, what do you think about objective reality, personal reality, is, is it possible that objective reality is a little overrated? It doesn't seem like we'll ever be able to see it for what it actually is. What, objective versus um, subjective? Like, or objective I, versus I, I, your personal perspective. Like, at a certain point, you'll never be able to view objective reality without your personal filter applied to it. So if you can get close enough where the difference is nominal, doesn't that make objective reality somewhat overrated? Close enough. 
Yeah. Like it, it kind of, it kind of all adds together. Like, like if, if, you know, if I know fire is hot, it. do I really need to know the exact yeah. degree fire is? It's just like, it's hot. Just don't touch it. That's my personal yeah. experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hot. And like everybody kind of cumulatively experiences that, uh, the fire is hot and like their subjective realities all correlate enough that yeah. like, Oh, we can kind of see that like everybody is experiencing the same thing that fire is hot. And like, you know, we're all experiencing it. We have these certain ways of determining that, that like everybody's experiencing this and it becomes objective reality. Oh, it becomes oh. objective reality. It becomes objective <laughs> reality or it just becomes a shared subjective experience yeah okay okay and there's an objective utility like there's an ob- if there's an objective utility raised in a, like if you're raised in a um fundamentalist christian um you know community that runs on a fundamentalist christian bios for example you know quote unquote then will you really get along very well if you're in you know if you don't you know if your bios is atheism or islamic or something like that are you really going to, you know, get support from your community? That's you know, can you get a job? Can you get things like that? You know, it's a lot harder to, you know, um, step out of that if there's no utilitarian value to it, you know? I'm going to throw a question out. Of, yeah. Scott, I'm going to throw a question out to Dale because I think that's a good subject. Um, Dale, is there is it worth embracing an objective reality if it will – make you, if you're already really comfortable with your perspective already, like say you're comfortable with your subjective reality, is it worth at that point going for an objective reality? I guess when the, <clears throat> the first the first thing a smart man says is I was wrong. So I don't think that anybody that's really confident and comfortable in whatever they believe should be considered all of that objective. So no. I, I don't really understand all of this. It seems to me that the idea that someone has a subjective reality as opposed to what actually is there seems like no one ever, no one knows what is actually there. And mm. it appears as the ministers in Fox News are capitalizing on subjective reality in order to influence the masses. I believe somebody was talking about how somebody could behave in such a way and you couldn't understand it because they're messed up in the head. Maybe that's another way of saying a aberrant subjective reality. Mm. But I, 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 also, I was curious about how ontology comes into it. Yeah, that's a good question. Scott, what somebody, do you mean by ontology? Yeah. So ontology is really talking about what really is the case, you know, about reality. I mean, and, you know, this, I'm, I'm this, sorry, I'm, I have to stop you. Uh, what is the hmm? word that you're using? Because I didn't quite catch that. Yeah, I was Oncology is cancer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ontology. Ontology. Like you have the, yeah, ontology, ontology is like with, ultimately what is, you know, the case. Like about if I had a layman's like dictionary, is, what would it say if I opened it up and there's like pictures of stuff? Like what, What's what the spelling? You? Ontology with a T? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so ontology. What's what's the really really layman's explanation of what ontology is? Do you have one? It's kind of like fundamental reality. Like what? um what <laughs> Do I need mushrooms? <laughs> is, like you've got all these interpretations. Yeah, it's it's um it's it's and it's easy to conflate epistemology with ontology. I'm I'm starting yes. to to right. figure out with with most people because we're talking about what is reality. And then, you know, if we don't, you know, my, my, my perspective is we don't really know what is reality really ultimately. Sure. And then that's why we have science. Science is trying to figure out what is reality. You know, Scott, I'm going to try um, to make a quick definition of this. Way. At, Scott, I'll mm-hmm. try to make a quick definition. Larry, let me know if this sounds accurate. I figure epistemology, how'd you figure that out? Ontology, okay, but what is it actually? Right. Exactly. So Larry, what well, ontology perfect. being more a study of the nature of being. Right. Yep. Mm. Exactly. Larry, what do you exactly. think? Exactly. What I was going to say uh, was that 
can any person ever divorce himself from his uh, perceptive perception of reality and actually experience reality as it actually is? Larry, I mean, uh, there are things I... like uh, a coffee cup. We can all look at it and say it's a coffee cup. Uh, we can touch it and we can lift it and we can weigh it and measure it, but it doesn't really... <laughs> Right. A good example. <laughs> hey, that looks like a teapot to me. <laughs> it doesn't really evoke emotions with us or a perspective of it, you know, as different than the the actual physical object. Mm. But there are a lot of things like uh, uh, seeing a person mistreat an animal. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, that that raises a lot of uh, emotion in us and it makes us feel like it's a wrong thing. It, it's something that philosophically we have to address. Mm. But, uh, I, and I think that we carry all of this philosophy philosophical and emotional baggage around with us all the time. There's no way that we can really divorce ourselves from it, mm -hmm. but, but we still have to strive to see reality as it is and uh, weed, weed out the wrong perceptions from the correct ones. Uh, and I think that's a lot of what uh, atheism is all about. Uh, yep. We have these supernatural claims and we can't mm -hmm. support evidentiarily these supernatural claims. So we try to divorce it from our worldview. Right. And we end up in, with a more or less naturalist view. I can Larry, hear a lot of um, religious people listening to this right now uh -huh. and saying, how do you atheists know that your perspective is right and mine is wrong? Aren't you just as um, aren't, aren't you kind of self-refuting yourself when you well evidence are an atheist? evidence supports our view? It doesn't really support their view. Also, right, and I'd also say just oh, before we go know. back, one thing, one thing, one thing. I'll say this too, um, as an atheist, I don't care about the conclusion. So, like, maybe I am wrong, mm -hmm. but I am interested in the methodology that I'm using to determine if things are right or not. And I'm Ooh, totally fine exactly. with I don't know as an answer until I do know, until I have a good reason to believe right. that. So my right. position yeah. is I'm Skeptical. working with the best methods that we have right now to know what things are true and what things aren't true. And until we have a better method, then I'll change my conclusions accordingly. So I don't know if yeah. my means are right, but I do know that my methodology is reliable. And right. I would wish for perfect, people who perfect. make supernatural claims that at least presented me a reliable means to come to right. their conclusion. Well said. I want exactly. to address. I, I was um, um, can, uh, George uh, address, on that. George, go on ahead. Uh, go on ahead. Yeah, and then I want we'll to address to uh, what Larry, what Larry was talking about. Um, no, I don't. I kind of doubt that I will die knowing everything and knowing what the truth is. I doubt but, it too. But mm -hmm. however, I think that I can damn well try. And mm -hmm. that is my goal in life, really. The first part of it is to know myself, you know, is to try to know myself as absolutely well as I can. And I'm never going to get there. But I'll, I'll be further along the path than I am now. Okay. That's about as good as I can do. Larry, what's and your I opinion can... on wordy dirties? Did he just wordy dirty? Did, did we just get a wordy dirty from George? Or is that good for it. All right, all right. All right, What's you're my mean? guide. You're my FCC guide. <laughs> Just as a note, we go on oh, the radio. Try not to curse, please. It, it saves my editing time. Dramatic. And I should know. Because... You are on timeout, George. Dale, what do you got? You got the rest of this time. <laughs> Dale, Red Leader, you sound like you oh want to say God. something. Well, I think I, I believe that uh, for the Christians to say that you're no more closer to reality than they am is pretty, than they are, is pretty valid. I mean, after all, you've got scientists saying, well, the universe burst forth from nothing. So, Who said that? Uh, it's, was it uh, green? Well, yeah, uh, let's let's take that a second. Occam's razor says that we shouldn't multiply entities. In other words, we shouldn't add things um, that where we don't need them in an argument. Well, we shouldn't uh, make it's either basically. it's yeah, it's either uh, the universe burst forth from nothing, or God burst forth from nothing and created exactly. the universe from nothing. Though, so I mean, he, we're he, adding extra stages to it mm -hmm. that are not necessary. Also, I'm also going to say there's a difference between a scientist said the universe came from nothing versus science says the universe came from nothing because one's right. actually mm -hmm. open. Well, and the, all the opinion. scientists will actually say we don't know. Yes. They're just, they're and just, I'm a scientist, uh, and I can tell you I've, I'm, I'm into this as well, where no one's saying nothing because we don't have a very good definition right. of nothing. We don't have nothing. Exactly. Can't measure you go. Nothing. I was about to say. 
So but the we, terrible philosophers anyway. But. Yeah, the best thing we have are layman explanations of the Big Bang that have been taken so seriously by people who don't have the context of what actual science <clears throat> nomenclature <throat> entails. And as a result, we have these bastardizations of what actual scientific principles are. We don't know. We just know that, I don't I won't get into the, the Big Bang. I don't think that's worth it for this radio, but it's not no. nothing. Because <laughs> we don't know My what nothing is. To, yeah. to someone well, who challenged to nothing say can't that start. Well, atheism is just a perspective equal to the Christian perspective is to say that my atheism, the way I'm defining it, is my atheism, which is an unbelief in just God, is informed by my um, agnosticism. So it's not really an answer to the question one way or the other. It's yeah. just saying, it's just admitting that I don't know, and it's kind of taking the meta perspective, that I'm and not I'll going to let my personal opinions sway me, because I may personally feel like, hey, the trees prove God, you know, maybe that right. resonates with me, but I'm going to step out of that bias and just admit that I really don't know. And that's a bad argument, you know? And I'm also going to say one more thing before we go to Jake, because I haven't given him a chance to say things, but uh, atheism is not the belief that the big bang theory is, is right. the absolute mm -hmm. model reality. It's just, I don't believe you theists yet. Please come up with a good argument because mm -hmm. the default position yep. is I'm not going to believe you until I have a good reason to. So if someone says, hey, atheists say this and, and theists say God, it's like, well, no, no, no. Atheists just say I don't believe the, the theists when they say there is a God. Right. They have more work to do. Jake, mm -hmm. what do you think about the idea of reality and what when, when people shoehorn arguments, what do you think about the Big Bang? What do you want? Floor is open to you. Where do you, you want to go with this? Oh, what about when people talk about reality? Like, yeah. like everybody's got everybody's got their own their own vantage point of reality, and they're they're interpreting the stimuli that they're getting differently, and everybody's kind of coming up with their own story of just kind of what makes sense. But like, like ultimately, you know, street epistemology. I love the the Tic Tac example of like bringing up the box of Tic Tacs. Like, mm. what? is real how many tic tacs are in here can there be a number of tic tacs or an odd number of tic tacs in this box at the same time is it right. is it subjective mm -hmm. is it if it's um yeah. can can we determine that can we test that somehow and and like ultimately i think that we, we can we can test stuff we can figure things out and it seems that you're able lines with my reality when we're talking about when we're talking about like like things that we can test like we can test them we figure things out and they line up and mm -hmm. you know they're, they're consistently lining up that you know just whatever aligns most with reality what aligns most with what we can test seems to be what reality is and people Ooh. seem to have these different like subjective views of reality of like, oh, well, this is my reality. This is your reality. Well, I'm experiencing this differently. Well, like ultimately like one, th I, I believe that one thing is happening. Like we are all kind of on the same track here as far as I can tell. And we're all in this together and we have methods of determining things. And those, those methods, if they prove to be reliable, that is what reality is, is, Man. is once we can reliably determine what's going on. And I'm, I'm just going like, to capstone I like what the... I'm just going to capstone what Jake was saying. It's basically knowledge yeah. is demonstrating something. And if you can't demonstrate it, <laughs> you don't know it. So it's worthwhile yeah. to be able to demonstrate with testing rather than just being lucky that you're right. And there's a lot of claims out there that either don't have a, the demonstration to back it up or might be true, but they got there through complete, you know, coincidence and luck. And as a result, it's really important to think about that methodology that we use to arrive at a conclusion because that demonstrates exactly. knowledge. knowledge is demonstration. I like the definition of evidence as um, prediction, prediction, predictable, novel predictions testable and novel predictions that you can observe uh, repeatedly. Mm. So it doesn't have to be repeatable. Somebody may say reliable. that, you know, like evidence is just subjective too, though. You, what you see is evidence that might not be evidence for what you're attributing it to. But so I like the uh, the um, testable predictions that you can verify over and over. You oh, know, yeah. evolution has 
you know, hundreds and thousands of predictions that it's made. And that's why it's a good theory. The hypothesis was this, and if this is true, then this should be the result. Yep, it was this made is why you have back problems at 60. <laughs> yep. That's an inside joke about evolution, but yeah. Dread yeah. Pirate, what do you think? I, I just thought it might be interesting to point out that uh, sort of a, a non, non-scientific understanding of the word theory mm-hmm. is different than the scientific definition mm-hmm. of theory sure. and that people yep. often conflate the two. Yeah. I think yeah. that that's uh, an analogy or, you know, it actually is a good metaphor for this idea of perspective. Right. Whether oh yeah, it's true. From a subjective point of view, is reality true or is there an objective reality out there? And that's almost like the difference between the layman's understanding of the word theory and uh, the scientific understanding of the word theory. In my opinion, I think there's a scientific idea of theory, and then there's one that fuels opinionated YouTube video <laughs> idea of uh, theory. <laughs> We're actually at the bottom of the half hour, though. Larry, why don't you take us out? We'll come back. This okay. is a great topic, Scott. Sure. This is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we'll be back right after this break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome back to the second half of the show, the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Dowder Five and this is Sunday, July 12th, uh, second half of the show, as I said, let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002, we're in our 18th year. ASK has over a thousand members and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org or you can go to meetup.com or even Google and type in Knoxville Atheist and you can find us that way. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start Start one. one. <laughs> Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. RET has been around for more than 20 years. Uh, just go to rationalist.org, click on upcoming events to find out what they're up to. Earlier in the show, we said we talked about the Atheist Call In television show. Well, it used to be called Free Thought Forum when it was actually on TV, but it's streaming online now on YouTube channels, has its own YouTube channel called Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. Because what? It's such a long name. Say that again. Name. I already forgot. Do it again. It should have just been Atheist Society of Knoxville. Ask. Yeah. You had the well, perfect word. Well, the thing about it is, it the reason they call it Freethinkers United <sighs> Coalition of Knoxville is because it's made up of ASK, RET, and other free thinking groups. Embrace the A. Just it's get it out there, baby. <laughs> I agree. It's a coalition of people who are all the same thing. They're all atheists. Just embrace the A. Pretty Larry, much. you're with me on this. I'm right. with you on that. That's why I started the Atheist <laughs> Society of Knoxville, because uh, the other groups wouldn't use the A word. Let's go. Anyway, if you're interested in getting involved with the TV show or this radio show, uh, just come to an Ask or RET meeting once we start having actual meetings. Right. Uh, or you can contact us online by the above methods, let us know and you might be our next co-host or guest. Uh, with us on the show, we have Wombat, Yo! We have Red Pirate Higgs, George, uh, Red Rider, uh, Red Leader, sorry, Damn. Jake, but so it. we had, yeah, we had a couple of topics. I think we rounded out our discussion on um, basically the nature of subjective reality versus objective reality. It seems like it's good to be able to demonstrate things. It's good to know the methodology of how we arrive at conclusions. And I think if we focused more on that methodology, that epistemology, our, on, our ontologies or how we know what things actually are or what things actually are would be a lot better because at least then we would have a reliable way to get there. What we're going to do now is some listener feedback. You guys have been doing some oh, some really great. Dread, what did you do with it? What Dread, did I, do with... I can't what? find it. Where are you looking Where, where'd it go? Feedback. Where listener did feedback. it go? Where is the love? Oh, <laughs> where is the love? The love? love. The love? love. Where is oh, the love? Oh. Thanks for hearing that. Thank you, Beth. All right, so... 
this is the <laughs> listener feedback session of the show. We've had a lot of comments in the last two episodes. Sorry we weren't able to get back to you guys. But uh, this one comes from Vaughn McHugh. Uh, he posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can post comments and we'll be happy to go, to go over them on the uh, show itself. He wanted to know, how can I get into Rational 101 in college? What are the costs? And is pasta a former currency? Dread Pirate. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? They're asking how, you about how, your, your question. Yeah, oh, how can I, how oh, can oh. I get into Rational 101? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. And is pasta a former currency? Pasta. Is pasta a form of currency? Well, uh, it, it's up and coming. <laughs> in the afterlife? Yeah, in the afterlife. One you, question you know, right next, you know, it's right next to the uh, the stripper factory and the beer volcano. So, Say I'm not in Canada. How can I get access to this? this well, I mean, it's still in development. Um, am I quite loud? Sorry. Yeah. Um, it's uh, still in development. It'll be going through Selkirk College probably on a video or virtual platform uh, in October. So, um, Dred, I'm going to make a recommendation. Sorry for interrupting you, but this is something I've learned every single time I've went to a seminar to give a talk. You always, always, always make a backup video and backup audio of your own talk. They'll say mm -hmm. they record it for you. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean they'll give it to you in any time frame that's acceptable. You always... I remember you having that uh, issue. Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah, definitely all that uh, will be the case. Um, I'll record it in in house uh, myself, and then uh, you know if Selkirk has something as well, then uh, that that'll be on them. But uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, we're looking at uh, October. So okay. And um, what? would be like is there an if you were to record yourself um would you post that on like maybe your channel like how would someone get what would be the cost barrier or like the access barrier and can they mail you possibly It'll, that? so because i am working with the college uh mm -hmm. we'll have to determine what the price is and you know the schedule and all that kind of stuff I, I have to work within their sort of administrative guidelines um to uh, pull it off so I'm going to throw something out at you that might be really interesting. Uh, you're going to have some video presenters. I know I volunteered for that. Yeah. Zoom, if you're doing it over Zoom, they have a uh, waiting room feature that basically lets anyone call in but not be a part of the video call. They can still hear. They can still, you know, spectate. Okay. But mm -hmm. it's just extending the class through online services without any, you know, uh, imposing on me doing whatever I'll do to help you or your class. I think that mm. might be a good option too. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. Yeah. Cool. And it's pasta form of currency. Pasta for currency. Yep. All right. We prefer cool. bow tie pasta, uh -huh. which some people just say is, is not pasta, but no, you know. it's not, yeah. <laughs> but it's cool. And can your institution accept American currency? Well, I, I imagine it would. Yeah. Cause pasta we, we love American currency. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to throw this out to George. You've been on this show long enough. I'm hoping you can answer something kind of close to this, right? But uh, Josiah Swims would like to know, can someone explain what street epistemology is? <laughs> because I was the person who asked last yeah. time. Yeah. Let's and um, we're, four sh we're four shows in. What's your impression of what street epistemology actually is? Well, I have to really make this down home. Okay. Essentially, it's talking your truth on the street. Talking your truth on the street. To, uh, in, in ordinary daily conversation with individuals, one to one. Okay. Just having a conversation with people, more or less. Right? No, that's how I understand the term. I really don't. <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Larry, what do you got? What do you think street epistemology is? Well, epistemology is how we know things. Uh, it's studying the methods of how we receive and, and validate knowledge. Street epistemology is b basically taking that methodology to the streets and talking to individuals, usually over a table, over coffee, something, uh, where you, hey, you, coffee. you, you bring up a, a, a subject and they give an opinion that they, they show what their beliefs are about a partic particular thing. And then you... Uh, as through a series of questions, you get them to examine the methods that they arrived at that conclusion with. Not bad, not bad. Scott, if you're still all here, what do you think street epistemology mm -hmm. is? You want to feedback on that? Yeah, I think it's just um, people 
it, it, as just to kind of piggyback off what Larry said, I agree with everything he said. Um, but for me, like when you're on the street and you're talking to people, uh, people have a chance to tell you what is their, you know, most cherished beliefs or what is important to them as mm -hmm. far as the belief or it could be political, religious, whatever it is. And then just asking them questions as to how did they arrive at that conclusion. Right. And um, seeing how confident they are in their belief. And there's just certain uh, questions from that point onward to figure out how do they know what they claim they know. Right. And I would also say I, I look for confidence, but I also look for openness, right? Like if I'm willing mm -hmm. to change my mind, then it's cool if I'm really confident about something, because at least now I have a standard for what it would take to change my mind. It's okay to be confident about things, but it's, I don't think it's as good to be closed minded about something. Jake, I'm right. going to throw this out to you. What do you think street epistemology is? Oh, so I think Larry, Larry, Larry put it awesome. Um, you know, it's the study of knowledge. Epistemology is the study of knowledge and the street just says that, you know, it's, it's on the street. It's, it's happening with your neighbor. It's happening with anybody that you're talking with. In an elevator. And yeah. 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 And, and, you know, like I'm using street epistemology, like the, the, the tactics of it, like every day in conversation that I'm having, it's a lot of asking. It, it doesn't so much focus on the, the what of what somebody's talking about, but a lot about the why and how that they determined that that's an accurate thing to, to believe. Sure. I would say just to add to this, tactics of SC, the basic tactics of it is, in my opinion, keep the conversation positive, make it a conversation, and then let the person do the thinking. Don't tell them what to think. And so it's not a teacher-student dynamic. If anything, the person who's doing SE is trying to learn from the person who's espousing about their belief system and how it works. So it's not a teaching tool. It's more of an understanding tool where you just try to put your own biases aside and try to emulate the kind of openness that you want the person that you're talking to, to, to follow as well. Dale, I'm going to throw this out to you. Have you ever heard of street epistemology? And um, if you do, what do you, what do you think of it? I, I really don't have much of an idea. I've been trying to listen to people talk and try to figure out how this could possibly relate to me. And the only story I have was I was down in Atlanta walking, or walking down the street and I had these religious people, I forget which church they were from, but they were actually assigned to each block. Wow. So if you were walking down and they said, would you like to hear about Jesus? Well, of course I go, yes, I'd love to. Let's keep walking. And uh, they would keep, and then, then they would stop. And I was crossing the street and they said, well, no, I'm only supposed to be on this block. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's funny. <laughs> on across the street wearing the same t t yellow t-shirt, they can, you know, they're from us too. So I cross the street and then this person continues to talk to me. And hmm. we were going to the zoo, I think it was. Anyway, it was almost there. And I stopped and I said, well, I'm a deist and your God is, is, is nonsense. And here's why. Wow. And that's not Essie, but about okay. How, about how their God was absolutely nonsense. And that's the way we deists do it. And, uh, <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, I was a street preacher because the people walking by who had been going up and down that street had been irked by these people in the yellow T-shirt stopping, being on every... So I had a crowd listening to me talk to the single person in the yellow T-shirt who could not get help from the other yellow t-shirts because they were assigned to their blocks. And so, uh, so just so I can wrap this up, <laughs> just so I can wrap this up. So basically you heard someone say, Hey, I believe in a God and this God actually lives. And you're like, no, I believe in a God and this God's dead. Let's argue. And everyone was listening to you guys. And if I was there, I'd be like, what is there a possibility that both of you guys might be wrong? <laughs> or, or, <laughs> in this instance, I would wonder, um, street epistemology isn't necessarily a combative technique. It's, it's really, I'm really not trying to figure out how someone's wrong. I'm trying to understand how someone's right. And if I can't work with them to figure out how they're right, that says way more 
than me saying, hey, you're wrong and this is why, or that's nonsense and that's why. It's both of us working mm-hmm. towards, to get towards a path. They're and if blind. we keep hitting nonsense, then it's like, hey man, we're, I'm working with you and we keep hitting nonsense. It's like, oh yeah, I should get a better way of figuring this out. That's exactly what street epistemology is. Dread, what do you think? I think we got you already, right? That we are. Nope. Okay, Dred, wrap it up. What do you think street epistemology is? Well, another way of putting it is Socratic in, uh, engagement, right? Or examination, Socratic examination. So using mm-hmm. the, um, the, the dialectic of, uh, of uh, you know, Socrates in, in ex- trying to examine the, uh, an argument and, and get to the truth of it. And that's why we got to keep it light. We don't want to end up like Socrates did. <laughs> you, mean, you mean famous? Go, go hemlock here. Uh, yeah. Famous? <laughs> the ultimate yeah. G? Um, all right. But uh, I, I, I was thinking, uh, you know, because the Tic Tacs were brought up. And uh, couldn't you have actually like Schrodinger's uh, Tic Tacs where there's both an even and odd number? No, Dredd, you're really going to trigger me them? now because we just talked Wait, about probabilities. misunderstandings about the Big Bang Theory. I don't want to get into the misunderstandings of Schrodinger's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone doesn't understand Schrodinger's law, and it's really unfortunate that that's the case, too. It is. All right. Oh, it burned. Okay. <laughs> Hey, this question comes from Tough Truth. It goes right into what we were talking about before. He wants to know, what do you say to someone that says, what do you mean by true? Scott, we're going to throw this out to you first. What do you say to someone who says, if you say true, uh, why do you know if it's true? And someone says to you, well, what do you mean by true? Scott, how would you answer that? Right. I would say that um, true is just uh, what I know to be the case. That would be the truth. Like I exist. I, I think, therefore, I am. I know that. I know that I exist because I can even form that question. That's uh, an example and, of truth. And it, hmm. it seems like it relies on the, my definition of no, no, which means I can demonstrate it to be the case. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm fine with that. Jake, I'm going to think about that. Jake, what do you think? What is truth? And what do you? How would you respond to someone who says, "What do you mean by true?" Yeah. Here you say, yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think it was Matt Dillon Hunty that said it, but um, I, I really like this answer. Truth is that which most con- conforms with reality. Yeah, he says comport, but yeah, I like conform as well. Yeah, comport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like words that have the same number of syllables but mean the exact same thing and are not as absurd. So I like conform. <laughs> I don't like interlocutor. I like yeah. interview partner because more people are going to be, oh, I know what an interview partner is, right? So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, like we we can see it in reality. If we can see it in reality, cool. If we can see it in reality, if we can demonstrate it, if we can and show there's a correlation here, that's more true. Uh, Red leader, what's your opinion I, of what's true? Thought, How would you respond to that? Okay. First of all, I thought we had already established that there was no reality in the first half of the program. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> I'm just fading away. Where's my Obama face when I need it? Uh, so, so uh, when it comes to people asking stuff like what is true and what is reality and all of that happens a lot at ask meetings, but you know, what's your definition of truth? What's your definition of dog? Yeah, it seems like we're always defining things, and I don't do that. I just say get a dictionary. You want to know what true is or what the word truth means? Get a dictionary. There's probably a dozen different definitions for it in there. So that's that's my opinion about a lot of these defining things. Okay, appeal to dictionaries. Yeah. I don't like dictionaries as a way to demonstrate things. I just think dictionaries only show usages. So I could read up rocket mm-hmm. science in the dictionary. It doesn't mean I know anything about rocket science. It just means I know how people define rocket science. So like, yeah. I worry about when people say, well, Merriam-Webster dictionary says that <laughs> blank plus like the, you're already It basically <laughs> says that the dictionary says that people use it like this. Exactly. Yeah. That's all that thing means. That's all that book is. Uh, Larry, Not I'm going to throw this up. I'm going to throw this out to you. What do you mean by true? If you ever said, if you ever got asked the question, well, I'm, I'm with Jake true? and I'm with uh, the atheist experience out of Austin, Texas. They say um, demonstrated true belief. It's uh, I like that it, and comport so, ha- with reality uh, as much as we can demonstrate that it comports with reality. It's true. 
yeah, if I can demonstrate it that mm -hmm. it's part of reality, then that's true. And that's what we were trying to get to. Maybe we can't get there exactly, but I'm fine with saying, hey, it's pretty close. <laughs> or we can test it. We have really yeah. Really tested. We could be in the Matrix. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we could be, but I feel like that's a really old movie that people haven't watched in a long while. If you saw that movie, you'd be like, no, wait a second, that's a dot matrix font. We have yeah. much better things than that. Uh, George, mm -hmm. throwing the same question out to you, how would you define true? I don't want to even try. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> My okay. head is just not there. I'm sorry. Fair enough, guys. Dread Pirate, uh, last last one in this roundtable. Well, how would you define truth? Justified belief. Justified belief. So if someone killed my father, right, and I'm like, time to kill them and justify. I have I have the justifiable right to to take my samurai sword and and take their heart. I think you're confusing justification <laughs> with justice. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it sounds like similar words. I'm justified. That's true. <laughs> What, what? Well, a belief that's justified, you're holding a belief uh, based on evidence. So that justified in the sense that it's supported by evidence and testable and all that good stuff. Because we live in a world where people have different connotations for different words, maybe validated belief would be better or validated. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Sure. Validated belief. Yeah. Things to think about. I always worry yeah. when we try to take things down to just one word. It sure. <laughs> leaves a problem. All right. Yeah. Hey, um, I think, so here's another question that we have from Crazy Man Man. Um, how do you respond to someone who refuses to define their beliefs? He says, for example, I'm talking to a theist that refuses to define God because they feel they don't know or can't know a true definition of God, yet they continue to believe in a God. I'm not sure how to proceed since they don't make any definitive assertions. So how do you respond to someone who refuses to define their beliefs? Scott, have you ever talked to someone who is a bit wishy-washy and how do you get past that? Oh yeah. Um, just ask questions, you know, just kind of hone in on what it is that, you know, what, 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 what's important for them, you know, and mm. just ask the question, you know, just try to isolate it down to the right question to get quicker to the point. Because they can be wishy-washy and it gets really, you know, weird and you got to go through <clears> like yeah. well, definitions and blah, blah, blah. Usually what I say is, uh, is it the God of the Bible? Oh, and, that's I good. Mean, because if they do, then you've got a lot of things that they will define it, whether they own to it or not. Okay. And, if, and if they say no, then I say, does it have any holy book? You know, because you're eliminating uh -huh. all the other religions. And if nice. they do that, then I assume they're basically a deist. And okay. at that point, they have no dogma. If they have no dogma, I have no problem with them at all. Yeah, it's believe, a bit of a new... Believe nerd. away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you, you might want to follow up. Does your God communicate in, in your head? Do you have a personal communication with them? Because if not, it's like, they still say no, then it's like, okay, you're yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll work with you. <laughs> right. Jake, Jake, what do you do with yeah. someone who has a wishy-washy belief? How do, you, how do you handle that? Well, if they're struggling to define their, their belief... I, I might ensure them that um, that like these definitions, like we can always we can change them. Um, like we, we're we're open to reinterpreting what that means, but we can work with a kind of a working definition. Like, what does it mean to you? Yeah. Yes. Very good. I like that. Yeah. It's, I'm not writing anything down in stone. I'm just trying to start a conversation about how you got your to your conclusions. I'm not even challenging what you believe. I just want to know how you got there, but we don't know what direction we're going unless we define, at least in a basic sense, where the destination is. So can you help me out with that? Yeah, that could yeah. work. Dale, you're a resident deist. Have you ever talked to anyone, maybe another deist, that is a bit wishy-washy with their statements? And how do you get about that? How do you go about that? I don't personally know any deist. But oh, okay. when it comes to a wishy-washy uh, dogma, yeah. they're not me i really don't care let them go about their way and believe whatever they want to believe however if they're knocking on my door and proselytizing to me or they're running for political office they are fair game okay <laughs> okay <laughs> i wonder can we apply this to like a, oh, go for it Joe. i got a question what how do you define deist I don't get a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. It's, okay, the word deist 
is the same thing as the word fear. One's Greek and one's Latin. Exactly the same thing, except that the word theist is reserved for those religions where God talks to you, has some sort of interaction with you. Deist is not, does not have any interaction with God. It's like deist. Yeah. It's like God no. isn't around. It's like, no, it's like deistist. I'm, it's God. like not identical, but it's like yeah. God well, is dead. Uh, many of the found, founding fathers were deists. They didn't yeah, believe yeah. in a specific. They're also slave God, owners. We shouldn't believed, hold them as a high regard. They believed in people. a creator God. And that was about it. One that's not around uh, or doesn't yeah. have a communication with us. God, have... that, let me tell you something. The God they talk about in the uh, endowed by his creator with certain inalienable rights. Supporting free well, you know, slavery of people. Yeah, like that's not a, that's not a, that's not a. <laughs> second. Endowed by the creator with certain inalienable rights. Now, regardless of whatever else you want to throw on them, the creator that they're talking about is the deist God, the God of nature. So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, George, what do you think about what were we talking about? Truth? How do you define it? You said you didn't want to talk about that. I think, no, no. Well, I, I, I don't feel what qualified do you do with someone to with, talk about. What? Have you ever talked with someone who has a wishy-washy belief? I'm quite sure I have, but not about it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Hey, yeah. in the future, if you do talk to someone with a wishy-washy belief, I would say spend some time to try to just define what it is they're talking about. I like how Larry supported it with just like a binary. So here's my impression of what it is. Is it yes or no in this category? At least that way I have an idea of what you're talking about. And then mm -hmm. you can work your way down there to get a better understanding. And you can work in very general concepts. Like, is your God in this holy book or is he not in this holy book? He can't be in both or, right? So like, is he, is that? I like that. I really like that approach, Larry. Um, and Dredd, I'll follow this up with you last. Uh, do you have any wishy-washy beliefs that you've tried to penetrate? And how, as a street epistemologist, how have you actually gone about it? Yeah, for sure. Um, I remember one uh, conversation I had uh, where, uh, and usually I, I set up the appointments, not like someone randomly coming up to me. I arrange my chats over coffee so, mm. so people show up. Um, and so one conversation, the gal showed up and I said, well, so what would you like to talk about today? And she says, well, I believe in love. Okay. And so yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, <that's perfect. laughs> when I'm doing it, I'm, okay. I'm just like, great. <laughs> you want to talk about something else so, or do you want? It, but, but it was a really, I mean, it was a good conversation eventually because we mm. sort of unpacked what she meant by that. Right. Uh, specifically relating it to something that was important to her, not just sort of that nebulous notion that uh, love is the foundation of the world or existence or whatever. Right. So, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just about, you know, you just got to keep penetrating uh, until you get to uh, what's actually inside that box, right? You got to dig. Got to dig. I mean, that's, that's what the SC dude does. He digs. Yeah. That's what it, that's all about. Any yeah. guys. We are at the end of the show. Dread, where can we find your stuff at? Well, uh, on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock, this is streaming live. Which so time zone? The time zone is PST, Pacific Standard Time, or Daylight Time, whichever. Um, so, yeah. so And that's something I neglected to point out there previously, is that we're actually streaming on Sunday, not Wednesday. Uh, ah. evening, so. Um, and, we... <laughs> and you can find me on uh, YouTube at Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. Pirate with a Y. Yeah. Pirate with a Y. Cool. Uh, Dale Newman, would you recommend any books? Or I know you like the dictionary, so we can probably <laughs> pick that up too. But like, is there any <laughs> other kind of media or resources that you think we should check out in the next week? Uh, no. I've okay. been watching uh, Michael Shermer's po or listening to Michael Shermer's podcast. Very, very nice. Nice. Very cool. Might what's his, mention what's your the name book of the show? Online. Yeah. Do I plug your, your book? Your book. Oh yeah. I've written a book that has Jesus existing just as the Bible said he existed and just as he did exactly what he said he did, but how the magician's tricks were done using technology of that day. No okay. technology, basically. Very cool. 
Very interesting. Yeah. Scott, would you recommend any piece of media or it could be even your stuff that you would check out that we should check out? Yeah. I, I um, something to kind of stretch it is kind of related to our topic from, from the first half hour. Um, there is a really good um, perspective on this from, uh, from here in Irvine. He's a, he's a university professor My and his name is, um, um, Hoffman. Damn, I, I just had a brain uh, slip. I forget his first name, doggone it. But he was on Michael Shermer. If you key in Michael Shermer and Hoffman, it'll pull it up. They had a deep discussion about this very topic that we're talking about. I saw this a few weeks ago. Pretty cool. Pretty nice. Episode George. number 85. Whoa. Episode number 85 of Science Salon with Michael Shermer talks about all of the different ways to communicate with someone when they're being ridiculous or whatever else in order to communicate with them and draw them into your conversation. Very. Would you repeat that, Dale, please? I Say believe it's episode number 85 of Science Salon podcast. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay, cool. George, I'll say that's yours, unless if you have something that you'd love to plug. Uh, no, I don't. Actually. Fair enough. But check out that science salon. Um, I'm Let's Chat. You can find me where you are looking at right now. This is my channel. <laughs> More than likely, if you're listening to this, it's on the Let's Chat podcast here on my YouTube channel. Um, feel free to leave a comment. Also, thanks very much to my patrons. Listen, it's been a crazy year with you know the sheltering in place. Thank you guys for all your continued support through this. And I can't wait for one as a nation for us to get healthier, as a world for us to get healthier. Uh, and uh, to mitigate this threat so that I can also go back out and continue doing what I love, which is talking to people about what they believe. And um, looking forward to that very much so. <laughs> Until then, I'll see you guys next week. Larry, why don't you take us out? Okay. Um, Dale didn't mention uh, the actual website to get to his book. It's oh, howjesusdidit.com. Yeah. Howjesusdidit.com. <laughs> I can't believe you got that URL. Okay, yeah, go for yeah. it. Uh, my book, on the other hand, is called Atheism. What's it all about? It's about. available on Amazon. Uh, also, you can visit our blog at digitalfreethought.com uh, for our radio shows, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. Uh, if you have any questions, send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, and uh, let's see, remember, I like to remind everybody at the end of the show that everybody's going to somebody else's hell. Mm. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. See you guys. Arr. All right.